is how to harvest your pumpkins and your winter squashes. Now, the two, you get squashes, you get summer squashes and you get winter squashes. They, most of them look roughly the same. Obviously the fruits are different, but generally speaking, the leaves look very, very similar because they all come from the same family. Now, summer squashes, the skins tend to be softer and you harvest those when they get to the size that they're supposed to when you harvest them. Whereas winter squashes, you leave on the plant until it gets much colder and all the leaves and all the stems have died down. And then it's time to harvest your winter squashes and pumpkins. Now, hopefully you can see some here. I do have a few more up, up this end. They all vary in size. There are three different varieties of pumpkins that I sowed this year. I didn't do any winter squashes this year, but if you've got butternuts or if you've got spaghettis or if you've got crown prints, all those sorts of things, they're the winter squashes. And it should say on the packet whether they're a summer squash or a winter squash. So um, I've got three different varieties of pumpkins here. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to harvest them all and we're going to have a look at them and we're going to see what we've got. Now here's one of my pumpkins and as you can see the leaves are going brown, the stems are going all droopy and they are soon going to turn brown. I could leave this one on for a little bit longer but to be honest with you I'm going to clear the rest so why shouldn't I clear all of these? They're not going to grow much more anyway. So it's very easy to harvest these. So let me show you how to do that. Now there's a bit of bindweed here, which is a pain, which I will, once I've taken the pumpkins up, I can then give this bed a really good weed and get anything out of it. Now, hopefully you can see that the stem of the plant comes down here and then we've got the little offshoot here that goes down to the pumpkin. All you need to do is you just need to cut it off. Don't cut it right down close to the pumpkin because you won't have a little handle to hold on to. And you've also got to bear in mind that this little stem here, once you've cut it off, it will start to go a little bit brown and soft. Um, so you don't want to cut it too low because the softness might then go into the pumpkin, which we don't want. So what you need to do is you need to get a nice pair of secateurs or a knife and you need to cut the stem as high up as you can. You can see that the stem's coming down here and then it shoots off there. So I'm going to cut it as high up to here as I possibly can and give it as much of a little handle as I, as I can, I'm able to. So there I have harvested the first pumpkin. If we turn it round, actually if I put it there then you should be able to see, it's actually quite heavy. Um, you can see that this section here was resting on the ground and it's a slightly different colour but that doesn't matter. Now there are plenty of things that you can do with your pumpkins so it's entirely up to you whether you want to carve them for Halloween or whether you want to make soup or whatever you want to do with them. But that's the first pumpkin. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to harvest all the rest and then I'll show you what I've got. Well I've just harvested them all. Here they are. They're coming. I think that's the smallest one there. It's about the size fits in my hand beautifully and I think this is the biggest one which is quite heavy which I will weigh when I get in and um, then I'll pop underneath how much it weighed um, but yes there they are these ones here this one that one and quite a few, the, the sort of the lighter orange ones they were from seeds that I saved from last year these ones I think are called polar bear I have a feeling and I can't remember what the other ones are called. They look a little bit like jack-o'-lanterns, 
but they're not, I don't think. So I'll have a look at the packet and again, I'll put it down the bottom what varieties they are. So that is my lovely little selection of pumpkins for this year. The best place to store them is in a frost free place. It's just started to rain now. It's not supposed to rain until for at least another couple of hours, but it's clearly decided that it's going to rain earlier. I was going to mow the grass, but that's clearly not going to happen. So what I will do is I will put these in a frost free place. The greenhouse at the moment will be brilliant for them. If you don't have a greenhouse, you can put them in a shed or you can put them in a garage. Uh, just keep checking them and make sure that there are no blemishes on them and none of them are going sort of slightly mouldy. If they are, then just cut that bit out and then use the, the pumpkin straight away in your cooking. So there we are, lovely selection of pumpkins for this year. So if you do have pumpkins, if your stems and leaves are still really green, then leave them in but once all the stems and leaves have gone brown, then it's time to harvest all your winter squashes and your pumpkins. Well, I hope you found that useful. I hope you've grown some massive ones this year. No, no huge one for me this year, but next year, hopefully, um, I will try and get a, a really, really big one. But only time will tell, we'll see. Well, I hope you found that useful and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.